when we go through a transformation, let's say that we are going to implement MRP, we are going to work on the data and have everything ready to go. But then three months, five months, six months down the road, then we are going to start having issues if we don't have processes to keep that data updated. Growing a business requires a holistic approach that extends beyond sales and marketing. This approach needs alignment among people, processes, and technologies. So if you're a business owner, operations, or finance leader looking to learn growth strategies from your peers and competitors, you're tuned into the right podcast. Welcome to the WBS Podcast, where scalable growth using business systems is our number one priority. Now... Here is your host, Sam Gupta. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the WBS Podcast. I'm Sam Gupta, your host and principal consultant at digital transformation consulting firm Elevate IQ. Material requirement planning helps in keeping the appropriate inventory levels that you need for manufacturing. If the MRP processes are not optimized, it could result in surplus inventory or component shortages that could halt your production. While several technologies are available to implement MRP, the biggest challenge is the cross-functional nature of the MRP processes as multiple business units and departments may be involved. This challenge makes the implementation difficult and causes operational disruptions. In today's episode, we have a guest, Marsha Williams, who discusses various components of MRP planning and where MRP fits in the process. She also discusses the differences between MRP and DRP and why MRP processes are challenging to implement in an organization. Finally, she shares several stories of complex MR planning, including performing MRP planning in a multi-entity scenario, planning when multiple locations may be involved, and when the bombs may have complex dependencies. Let me introduce Marsha to you. Marsha Williams has 18 years of experience in the supply chain. She is an MBA from Michigan State University with concentration in supply chain and finance and a bachelor degree in accounting. Besides, she is Six Sigma certified by Cummins Incorporation. Marcia is an ERP functional consultant and author, speaker, and a podcast host. With that, let's get to the conversation. Hey, welcome to the show, Marcia. Thank you, Sam for this opportunity. I'm very pleased to be here today with you. Okay, I'm super excited as well. Just to kick things off, do you want to start with your personal story and your current focus? Of course, my pleasure. I started in accounting, right? My bachelor's degree is in accounting, but then I continue my career in supply chain. And today I have almost two decades of experience. So to be exact, 18 years. I started as an accountant and then I came to the U.S. to Michigan State. So I am a Spartan to have my MBA. And the MBA is with concentrations in finance and supply chain. After that, I had great opportunities to work in large manufacturing companies like Alcoa, Cummins, and then I have my own business. And that is what I have been doing. And it has been a a great experience. Not always the best, but (laughs) I enjoy it every day. Yeah, so there are always going to be ups and downs with your business. So obviously, we'll be discussing a little bit on that too. But before we do that, we have one of the standard questions for all of our guests. And that is going to be your perspective on business growth. When you think of a word growth, what does it mean to you, Marsha? To me, growth is to improve, right? And as you were saying, it's not always that you keep that you keep having success after success because you will get success (laughs) but growth is like to improve there's a certain timeline and when we have the right mindset and we make the effort we will get the results so to do that of course the the tactics are also important And we need to have systems in place, processes that that happens with every company. It's like we need to be organized ourselves 
And then, yes, then we continue to grow. And initially, I see growth like it is challenging, but then later it gets easier. So I remember those words also from a COO that I work with. I had the pleasure to work with him. And he was always uh, making an analogy like, you, you, maybe you feel like at the bottom of a huge mountain, but then with effort and persistence, being consistent, then you will get there. And once you are there, it gets easier. Okay, uh, amazing thoughts there. And uh, in my opinion, I think you bring a very important background and that is going to be aligned to the topic that we have for today, which is going to be MRP. Obviously, you started as an as an accountant and then moved on to the supply chain. So some companies are really good at doing the MRP. Some companies are not there in their game. So tell us some of your MRP related experience. If you have worked with a client, you know, what kind of MRP processes did they have? Talk about what MRP really is, if uh, some customers might not be familiar with the, the MRP process. So can you touch a little bit on that? Yes, of course. MRP is a transformation. So we talked before about growth and MRP means that because when you grow, you transform and it's a, a huge change. The, I like to start with the importance of MRP and then see what it means. MRP is important because in that way, you can get your profit. And I'm going to explain that. No, because it involves both, like revenues and costs. Revenue, because you need to get the materials. You need to have them in place to be able to sell. It doesn't matter if you generate important sales and you don't have the product. So MRP is going to help you with that to ensure your revenues. Also, it will help you with cost because if with MRP allows you to write to, to purchase at the right time, the right quantities of inventory. Yeah. So that means that MRP is a great, great uh, transformation because yeah. it will affect in your financials, you can see that in your PNL, revenues and cost, both effects. So it's not only like sometimes I say forget about marketing and just focus on on your supply chain because MRP is part of the supply chain. So that is MRP, the importance of that is going to help you with your results, with your with your profit. Now what is it MRP? It sometimes we, we are used to use the acronyms, but yeah. it it stands for material requirements planning. So it's yeah. part of the planning. That is the way that we are going to use MRP to precisely generate profit. So it's planning for the materials, for the production. So you ensure that each time you are going to produce, you have the right elements. And I have seen a variety of ways that companies do this planning because even though they may not call it MRP, they need to do it somewhat. So I have seen from the beginning stages, like you can do it in an Excel spreadsheet that you can find Excel everywhere. And then you can also have a system. You can have an MRP system that is specific to do this planning of materials for production to control inventory. And you can also find the MRP within an ERP, that ERP covers more areas that I know that the audience is aware because you have such great episodes about different aspects of the ERP. So MRP can be a module within the ERP system that is enterprise and resource planning. Okay, so let's talk about in detail in terms of what are the variables that that are exactly that should be familiar with. So obviously, when you talk about the material requirement planning, we get the overall intent that 
it's about doing the production and making sure the production has the materials at the lo- right time, mm-hmm. making sure the sales has the right number of products uh, or the right amount of products to be able to sell. So overall intent is great. And everybody does MRP in some fashion, as you have correctly pointed out, because if they don't plan, obviously they'll not be able to run the business, right? So there are different algorithms. So now in your experience, what are some of the key variables that are going to be important for MRP? Can you talk about those variables? Yes, of course. In first, Sam, if you allow me, I would like to start like, mentioning where MRP is in the planning process. I'm going to give you an example, like with a large chocolate manufacturer. Everything in planning, in this case, they they were selling to the major retailers here, like Walmart, yes, Walgreens, Target. And their planning starts with a forecast and the sales that they did in the past. So that is one area. And with that, they say, okay, this is the demand that, again, um, I would like to clarify that demand is not the same as sales. And we saw this during the pandemic. Yeah. We wanted more disinfecting wipes and we didn't have enough. So yeah. the demand in that case is higher than sales. So there's a, a, a plan there, a demand plan. And then once the company decide, analyzes the demand plan, they can say, okay, this is what we are going to produce, right? And that is the, the master production schedule. So that element, the master production schedule, will go into the MRP. So that is one of the key elements. The company will decide what to produce, the quantities, product, and also by when. That is critical. So that is one element that we need to consider for the MRP. Another one that the MRP also, if they they are going to, if, if the system is going to tell us what to buy and when, needs to know how we produce the, those items. So another element is the bill of material. That is a recipe, right? Yeah. In the case of the chocolate, it's a recipe. You will yeah. have the ingredients, you need to define the unit of measure. Also, there can be some material that we lose when we are cooking, right, the, the, yeah. in the process. So we need to consider the scrap, the different ingredients. So that is another element that the MRP considers, the bill of material. And then another element that considers to tell us what to buy and how much and when is the existing inventory. Because if we don't start from scratch, we will have some inventory and we don't want to duplicate. So yep. those are the key elements. And then we will need to pay attention to critical areas within those elements for the MRP to work. Because as you said, we need to make sure that those elements, we have them right. Because it is a system, right? So that means that if we include data that is not accurate is going to give us results that are not valid. Yeah. So when it comes to planning, I mean, everybody does the planning differently, right? So in this particular case, you did mention that one way to build your forecast is going to be looking at your sales history, and then you have the master production schedule. Mm. And that could be, let's say, based on whatever you are trying to produce, especially in the make to stock scenario. So that's what is going to drive the demand. So since you mentioned the word duplicate, right? So number one, how do you identify the duplicate? Because when you look at the sales history, right, there might be some elements that might be included as part of your master production schedule. So obviously, if you have the ERP system, that is actually going to help you in identifying the duplicates so that you are not inflating your demand. So what are some practices that you have seen in your experience to make sure that you are not duplicating your demand, especially, let's say, Mm -hmm. if the production might be saying that, you know what, I need to produce this much based on whatever the sales is saying, then 
sales might have their own way of doing things, right? And then you might have multiple departments. So what are some of the practices that you have seen in terms of eliminating these duplicates across across the departments, across the functions, when you have multiple departments and functions involved? Yes, no, that's a great question. And I'm going to mention some of the errors or areas that we need to pay attention based on, on what I have seen. One critical element that we know it happens with every transformation that we want to, to achieve is the data. So in this case for MRP, first we need to check the item master, right? Or how we, how we have all the items, right? All the inventory items that can be raw materials, a work in progress, a whip, or it can be finished goods. If we have them, in the correct way. And by that, I mean, for example, let's say that we have different locations. One location can have different part number for the same item. So that, that can lead to a mistake of buying more of an item. Yeah. So we yeah. have the same, and that happens, I can tell you, not only in small companies, it happens with large businesses as well. So with the same item with different part numbers. So there's a, an area for, um, for concern. So we need to check that data, the items that we have to make sure that one item has the same part number or there's a way that we can uh, group the items. So in that way, we know how much we have, how much in stock of that item we really have. That is one, one of the, the areas to pay attention. Another one with the bombs. There I, I have seen many issues because yeah. there are some bombs, just to, to give you an idea, that they have expired components. So at the moment that the company created the bomb, everything was fine. Yeah. But then there are components that now they are expired. So the bomb is not valid. And there you can see that the result of the MRP are not going to be correct. We cannot buy from something that is already expired. And we don't have that mark as expired. So then the system will say, Okay, you need to buy this item, and it's an item that you you don't need to buy. So those are the data on the bombs. Another um, error or area to to check is the unit of measure, and that can also cause issues that we buy more or we are not buying in the more efficient way yeah. because it's not the same, right? One box than one each. So we need to be careful and to define the unit of measure properly. This is uh, this gets more complex when we have more facilities, more sites, more manufacturing sites, because we need to have the same definition. That is another area to check. Well, I also mentioned before the scraps. Sometimes we don't consider that. And other times the bombs are incomplete. I remember one time that was an experience that I had. We couldn't sell the products. We couldn't ship because what was missing was the box the corrugated yeah. box. So the CEO was saying, I can't believe that this is happening because we had everything, but we didn't put that on the bomb, the box, yeah. and we couldn't ship. So those are the areas that we need to, to be um, checking constantly. And as you were saying, this involves different functions. And we talk also in different languages to make this more difficult. Because if you talk with sales, they are going to talk about the finished goods. They tell you about the brands. If you talk with the procurement team, they don't talk about the brands. They talk about the raw materials, the part number, part yeah. numbers for the, the ingredients. So this, um, this uh, MRP implementation is not challenging because of the technology. It is challenging because it involves many different teams and we have different interests. That is one point. 
And, and another one, because it implies, yes, a, a big change. So those are the challenges in this process, in the planning. If you are a planner, you want to see everything. But if you are at the executive level, you don't want to see all the details. So we need to define a way to show the plan with different levels of granularity and with those di considering those differences in the language that we use. Okay, so let's talk about the different functions as you mentioned, right? So if you have different locations that also you mentioned. So for example, let's say if you have either the multiple sites or multiple warehouses. And in a lot of cases, especially when we look at, let's say the distribution or the complex manufacturing. So what may be happening is, let's say if the headquarter is actually buying for the smaller warehouses or for the smaller stores, and the same thing could happen with the multi-entity scenario as well, where let's say you have the centralized entity that actually buys for everybody else. And the reason for that is because they might be capitalizing on some of the discounts or they might have the location benefits, right? And then they will be transferring it to the smaller locations that might be, for example, either let's say selling or consuming. So obviously the MRP planning becomes very complex in this scenario because somebody else is driving the demand for the other locations or the for the warehouses. Have you seen similar challenges when you were planning for the MRP? And what would be your thoughts or recommendation in planning in case of the multi-entity or the multi-warehouse scenario? Yes, in, there are in I, I have seen that with some of the customers that they have more than one location and also well some of the issues that I mentioned happens when you have different locations because it can also be in this in the same location just to call the, the same part with different part numbers, but it's more common with other locations. And what I have seen, for example, is that we are not, in many cases, we are not optimizing the MRP functionality because we can check in our system and then we see we don't check it in others. Like we need to, before going to, to buy, we need to check as, as an element that gets into the MRP the existing inventory. And that existing inventory can be in a different um, in a different location. So that is a, a very common error. And at the end, we have more inventory than needed. I would also like to to mention a little bit because as you were talking about different locations, I, I would like to clarify a point about the, the MRP and and something else that the audience. It may have heard that is the distribution requirement planning because they are similar and at the same time a little bit different. So that's why I would like to clarify when we have different locations. MRP is more related to production, to define what we need and have everything ready for manufacturing, to complete manufacturing. So yes, the, that is the focus. And the DRP instead is with the management of the, the product within the different warehouses. So there's a distribution center and there are different ones. So one area can be asking for more product than another one. So that's why the two need to work together. And in the ERP system that I mentioned before, we have these uh, two modules. And coming back a, li a little bit with the explanation about planning, because we say, we say we have a forecast or we have a we have the, the forecast and that is based on history or can be also with demand sensing, but we have a, a prediction, right? An estimate, and then we will have the master production schedule, then that is going to feed the MRP and then when we have the MRP, well, everything will happen with production. You can also mention that there can be also a, 
uh, capacity, right? That they check against capacity. And after that, we are going to distribute the product. That is DRP. So I just would like to, to explain all of these uh, steps um, because I think it's clear to see like all the planning. And when we talk about the MRP, what we are talking, even if we have different locations. Okay, so since you mentioned the distribution requirement planning, and let's say if we are talking about the pure play distribution that might not be doing the manufacturing, they are going to be slightly more robust in doing the distribution, and they are going to be slightly more sophisticated in doing the distribution requirement planning. And the same thing could happen with the MRP as well. If you have the very complex manufacturing shop, they are going to be slightly heavier in doing the manufacturing requirement planning. They might not be as heavy on the distribution requirement planning. But when you talk about the complex scenarios, right? So in these complex scenarios, what is going to happen is, let's say you have a product, right? So that product you might be selling, but you might be consuming as well as part of as as a part. Uh, mm-hmm. Let's say in yes. in your MRP, right? So that could be a scenario, or it could be slightly more complex. I mean, uh, you know, it's all over the place, right? When it comes to the the manufacturing and distribution. So what are some of the challenges that you have seen, especially? in communication with your DRP and MRP, in exchanging these parts, in making sure that the MRP is optimized, especially when you are sharing some of these parts in doing the DRP and MRP. So what are some of the challenges that you have seen because of DRP and MRP communication and what are some of the best practices? Yes, great. I have seen that in particular in a, in at Cummins, right? When yeah. I, I work in, for Cummins. And yes, that scenario that you mentioned is what happens. There's a business unit, fuel systems. So some of the parts, and there are, and there's another business unit engine that produces engines and they need to use parts created by other plants. So some, some of the, the challenges is that, right? That you, your customer is an internal customer, but at the same time, if the SOP, right? All of this planning process that we are talking is done well. There will be that communication and it's going to be considered on the plan because at least that is something that is within your organization. I understand that it's with different plans, but it's something that is on, on the plan. So. That is one challenge that the plants in general, they don't talk to each other. And when there are some delays with the schedule, if there's a delay in the schedule of a component, even though if it's an internal customer, you will get that and it will have an effect on your production. So something that I have seen is that in particular with lead times, that I mentioned before the key elements and I, and I say it, okay, is the, the master production schedule, the bomb and the existing inventory. But also, of course, when we, we do the, the master production schedule, we are talking about timing, right? The lead times. So that is critical to get the right results. And when we have different plans, Within the same company, what I have seen is that there's not a like a holistic approach. It's more, more difficult to, to get to that. But of course, is the way, as we mentioned before, those are the challenges with the communication to have the clear plan and also the metrics, right? Because we need to know once you are doing this, you need to know where the issues are. If we are having, for example, delays from a plant, and it's always that plant, they may have issues with capacity or they may not be getting their raw materials on time. So the the issues vary, but one critical point is to have that holistic approach and consider all the locations on the plan. And that, that is internal to the company, even though, as I mentioned before, 
it has different business units, different locations. DRP in that one is even more challenging because here we are also managing a different demand that is the demand from external customers. So MRP, when we talk about different plants, everything is like within the four walls of our company because or we use the master production schedule or or something that I, I don't want to be like to, to start using many words <laughs> about supply yeah. chain, but that is like a push system, right? This is what we need to produce and this is what we are doing. With DRP is different because now we have the customer that the customer is the real demand. Yeah. So that is the actual demand. So DRP is driven by the actual demand and also it can be from the internal customer because sometimes we need to ask the warehouse and, and I have seen that we need to ask for parts that we thought we had and we didn't. That is another issue with data, right? Because if we don't have the inventory in identify in the right location, we can have very, uh, very bad result. And here it comes my accounting side. In accounting for inventory, I check the value, right? So to me, I don't mind. What I care is about the total value of my inventory. If I have that, that's great. But in supply chain, that is not the case because I can have inventory in a plant that is far away, right? And it's not going to be here when, or where I need it at the right time. So in supply chain, it matters that the system shows the inventory where it is. And that I have seen many errors too when the system you can enter in inventory and you don't assign a location. So then you don't know where it is. And that is when we start getting the error. So again, the, the importance of the data, of having that right, and then also the process to keep that data updated because that is the, the challenge. When we go through a transformation, let's say that we are going to implement MRP with a new system or we switch from the existing to something else, we are going to work on the data and have everything like great, ready to go. But then three months, five months, six months down the road, then we are going to start having issues if we don't have processes to keep that data updated. Okay, amazing. Thank you so much, uh, Marcia. That's it for today. Do you have any last minute closing thoughts by any chance? Yes, I do, Sam. <laughs> I, I would like to reiterate the importance of preparation for these transformations. A technology can help you. That there's no question. But we need to have the right data and and the right processes in place. Because if we want to scale, if we want to grow, as we talked at the beginning, we need to have those foundations clear and then scale something that works, not scale something that will have errors and then is going to be more challenging. Of course, that implies work, but the results are worthwhile. So th those are my last uh, points that I would like the audience to remember from this episode. Okay, and my personal takeaway from this conversation is going to be MRP is going to be critical to make sure that you are able to produce and to be able to have the optimized level of inventories so that your cash is not lost. On that note, Marcia, I want to thank you for your time this has been an insightful conversation. Thank you so much, Sam. I really enjoy it. It was a pleasure. I cannot thank our guests enough for coming on the show for sharing their knowledge and journey. I always pick up learnings from our guests and hopefully you learned something new today. If you want to learn more about Marsha, head over to usmsupplychain.com. It's U-S-M-S-U-P-P-L-Y-C-H-A-I-N.com. Links and more information will also be available in the show notes. If anything in this podcast resonated with you and your business, you might want to check the related episodes, including the interview with Cristiano Geraldini, 
who discusses the importance of costing granularity and why it is crucial to understand your product's profitability. Also, the interview with Mike Ryan, who discusses how to do sales and operations planning appropriately for a growing business. Also, don't forget to subscribe and spread the word among folks with similar backgrounds. If you have any questions or comments about the show, please review and rate us on your favorite podcasting platform or DM me on any social channels. I'll try my best to respond personally and make sure you get home. Thank you, and I hope to catch you on the next episode of the Podcast. Thank you for listening to another episode of the WBS Podcast. Be sure to subscribe on your favorite podcasting platform so you never miss an episode. For more information on growth strategies for SMBs using ERP and digital transformation, check out our community at wbs.rocks. We'll see you next time.